Okay, welcome back friends. We are in part two of a very challenging waterfall table build. Uh, it's actually two pieces. We got a waterfall table that stands about 42 inches tall and then a bench uh, that goes in kind of the same area of this building. Now in the first video we really worked on kind of an MDF core for this table. Uh, a lot of great comments from that video. Um, a lot of encouraging comments. A couple people mentioning that they would have approached it more from a boat building standpoint, which I actually think is a great idea. Instead of using the MDF, um, we could use uh, more of a, you know, kind of a ribbed frame, a lot like a canoe or something of that nature. Uh, it probably would work really well. The, you know, obviously I showed in the first video that the MDF was really challenging to work with. Um, but once you lock it in, put the veneers and the plywoods all around it, it's super strong and stable at that point. And the reason why I chose MDF was just because I didn't want any wood movement. I wanted this thing to be stable and we were building up pretty thick blocks and so I knew MDF was gonna stay uh, very stable. Okay, so jumping into this video, uh, at the end of the last video, we kind of left in a bit of an area we were fixing a mistake. Biggest challenge with this table and something I'm trying so hard to nail is this transition from paint to uh, raw edge. There's that curved bottom comes up, hits that edge. And so we were having issue with that edge uh, and the curved bottom being nice and straight and clean so that transition happens well. We fixed that by inlaying, or not inlaying, but rabbiting in strips of maple. So we're gonna jump right back into this video, uh, kind of there cleaning that maple up and moving on from there to uh, putting on veneers. And we're gonna have a few more mistakes in this video that I'm gonna share with you guys and show you how we got around those. I wanna say real quick, a huge thanks to Total Boat for sponsoring this video. We use their epoxy extensively throughout this build. And um, I use their epoxies pretty much on almost every build that I do in this shop. I don't pour epoxy, not really my thing, but we do use it as a, an adhesive. We also use a few other products in this video. I'm gonna show you those as we get into the video. So let's just get started. Okay, so you notice there we were kind of testing the fit. We want to make sure that the miters line up properly, especially on that inside edge, uh, because once we lay this maple veneer on, there's not much room for adjustment because your veneers are so thin, you can't really shape from there. Uh, so we did a quick test, and then we're going to lay on this maple veneer. This is a wood-backed veneer, um, so it comes, I think this came in 24-inch wide by 8-foot rolls. Really easy to work with. Um, you can just cut it with a knife and we uh, lay that on using Total Boat's epoxy. Uh, the, you'll notice there, there's some green spots where we did some filling work. We use this product here called Total Fair. I use this stuff a lot and you can tell because it's super filthy. Uh, this will fill nail holes, fill divots. Um, it's a great fairing compound and it's epoxy based. So the epoxy we're using to lay on the veneer is going to adhere to it and it's all gonna work great. So. So once we get the veneer set where we want it, we put it in the bag. You'll notice too that we put blocks under the um, table surface to raise it up so any veneer hanging past the edge doesn't get crushed in the bag. And a um, bit tricky getting it in the bag, but we get it in the bag, get it laid up, and then when it comes out of the bag, we just have to trim all those, that thin maple veneer down. Uh, you can use a spoke shave. And then this is about where I realized that we had some serious problems. Everywhere we had a rib on our frame, the bag had actually crushed down a little divot that had that much force. So there wasn't any support there. And now we, instead of having this perfectly flat paintable surface, uh, we have these little ridges and divots, which this cost us a lot of time, unfortunately. It was a bit of a mess. You can't paint it that way because anytime you paint something with a sheen, you're just gonna see any imperfection. And you know, I just can't have that. So, so we busted out some uh, automotive filler, Bondo basically, and did a lot of work with this, a whole lot of sanding, and probably spent a week just going through and refilling and sanding and just making sure everything felt smooth and fared in, and it was a lot of work. And it was a big 
a big hiccup. I didn't realize that that bag was gonna have the force to crush it down in like that. So um, another big problem, uh, but we solved it. We just filled it. Thankfully it's paint gray. I mean, if we weren't painting this, it would be a big problem. So, so we were able to fill it, get it all smooth, and in the end, it worked out just fine. Oh, dude, that's perfect. I bet you can hit him with a mallet now. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's rubbing up here. Oh, yeah. I think my, my plan is to get these on the floor and get, get it screwed into both of those and then try to look and see... If they're okay straight this way not even where don't worry about the top not yet, yet because we're going to know pretty quickly if it's like twisted like this yeah and the bench will be a lot easier than the table because they're not near i wonder still. if it can pull it straight you know with because of the splines and it well yeah i mean we're going to put the top on but i'm going to start i'm going to start with this only without the top and then we can loosen a little bit it didn't matter what side, did it? You coming to help? You can help us. Uh, I don't think it did. <laughs> Hopefully it just goes right down. In here. Alright, we're just gonna go for it. Well, if you want to mark where the hole is, we can pull this out and then... I think it'll do it. I'm just gonna put one in there. Alright, so I'm gonna run and jump and just set it on there. Alright, for this one, maybe we'll just set it in there. I think it's gonna work out fine. Man. I'm not even remotely okay. close. <laughs> we just need to pull it out some, but I don't wanna hit it and knock something out. get a mallet because my hand's not a very good mallet. I put it right there. Just the, yeah. There, there it goes. 
Okay, so you can see there, Robert and I kind of dry fitting everything, making sure that it all would come together. I was a little bit concerned with the metal. If there was any twist in it that it would throw those legs off and that the top wouldn't line up. Fortunately, we were okay. I did do all the welding on this project. Um, first time ever welding. I just bought a welder off Amazon and I filmed a lot of that, but it was, yeah, I'm not a very good welder, so. I don't know if it was worthy of YouTube footage. And so we went ahead and assembled these bases. Uh, at this point, we can go ahead and glue those miters, lock everything down, and then we're gonna come back and start working on the pecan veneer, the coolest part of this build by far. Got it? Yep. Awkward back here. Yeah, all right. Good. Huh? Yeah, I'm blind back here, so I'll just push. Okay, to better understand how this book match works, so the client provided several slabs from the same tree that were roughly around 20, uh, 24 inches wide by a little right at eight feet. And we wanted the grain to flow all the way around and down, so what we did was we split that slab right down the middle. We used the bandsaw so we had a really thin curve because we're gonna just put it back together. We don't want to see that glue seam. We wanna hide it, so the thinner the curve, the better that's gonna happen. We resawed, once we split it in half, we were able to resaw. We had the capacity to do that. And then we came back and put it together four pieces to make the veneer for the top. Um, basically the book match happens in the middle, as you can see when we lay it on the floor and then everything flows down from there. We glue the two veneers together in the clamps um, and then we run those through the sander, surface those, get them nice and flat. And then they're ready to go on our prepared plywood substrate that has pecan edge banding on it. Uh, and go in the bag and get actually veneered down uh, so that we can come back and attach it to the base. We veneer both sides. You always want to veneer both sides just to keep things balanced. Even though this is going to get glued to that base, um, it's going to sit in the shop for a while. And if we just veneered one side and if it's set for two or three days, it would start doing potato chip stuff and it would be a mess to work with. So we veneer both sides just to keep everything balanced and keep things flat. Okay, so these miters are pretty critical here and you want to take your time on something like this and, and just do it in a way that doesn't back you into a corner. So what we did first cut is the center cut right down the middle. We do one side, uh, we cut it, lay it on, we mark the center part on our base, put it on there, mark for the miter, cut the miter. We've got that first piece, piece cut how we want it. Now we're going to clamp it down exactly where it needs to be in position. Uh, clamping this proved to be a huge challenge and after some a lot of thought from Robert and I, we, we landed on just using ratchet straps and we made you know ways to rig those up to hold the, the piece onto the base. So we were able to ratchet strap that one side down, take the next piece, fit it on there, make sure that it stays straight along the whole length, that there's nothing you know getting crooked or sideways, and then we mark cut that miter, and then we can miter our two hey. sides, and that's kind of our process. Leave the sides long, cut the miter first, get your miter dialed in, and then it's easy enough to come back and cut off the length on the bottom. Wow. 
foot out. There you go. Dang it. Didn't want to do that. What I decided to do on this was to go ahead and uh, domino those miters that, on that half inch ply and go ahead and glue those up. So we wanted to go ahead and make those one piece. Uh, we decided that would probably be a lot easier in, in the final glue up, having that all together. Those miters would be tight and clean looking. Um, we knew we could do that with the half inch a lot easier than when we were wrestling the whole thing, all four pieces. So we went ahead and glued those up. And then on the, you know, you're seeing most of this footage on the bench. On the tall table, it was a lot more challenging to do those miters because you had 42 inches of length. If you were a little bit off on your miter angle, by the time it got to the bottom, it was running off the edge and it wasn't covering the base. Um, so we needed, we only had about a, oh, not, I mean, I can't remember, it was about a quarter of an inch on each side of, of overhang, not even maybe that much. So there wasn't much margin for error if that miter got off and things ran off and didn't line up. So we did a lot of fussing with that. Like I said, you want to leave that piece long, get the miter dialed in, and then you can cut your length in. Uh, that's just playing it safe. It doesn't back you into a corner. So that leads us into uh, one of the more stressful parts of this build, the glue up. Okay, so we've done a quick trial run here on our clamping system. Um, after a lot of thinking and head scratching, the ratchet straps seem to be the trick. So uh, we made these little side calls that have a little rabbit in them. And those protect the edge and they also help put pressure down right where we want it because we want a nice clean glue joint here where the the pecans meeting the bottom the maple and then we've got a two by four here that's helping put some pressure in the middle it all seems to be working well a few things we're going to do real quick are raise it up so if we need to which i think we will we can get a clamp from the bottom foot up to here there's a little gap right there i think we can close if we can do that and then since we're putting so much pressure on the middle of the bench, I don't want it to, you know, sag or potentially even break, which I don't think it would, but we're going to make little supports that go from the steel stretcher up to this just to keep that from happening. And then once all that is done, we're going to put glue on it. Cool. Okay, so while we're gluing this up, you'll notice we're again using Total Boat's high performance epoxy. Throughout most of this build, with exception to laying the pecan veneer on the plywood, we used the epoxy. A uh, couple reasons. Biggest reason is because it is um, slow setting um, adhesive for us. Uh, so you can get it in several different types of hardeners. It's a two part system, so this is the hardener, and you get a resin. You can get a slow, medium, or fast hardener. We use medium hardener 75% of the time. Uh, if we need to go a lot longer open time, we can use a slow hardener. On something like what we're doing right now, the slow hardener works great because you have plenty of time to get everything spread and get everything in place. Um, one great thing too is Total Boat provides several different types of um, fillers or thickeners. Um, they've sent me quite a few to mess around with. Silica is the main one we use, and if you need it to not be runny, you can load it up with that silica and thicken it. Now we've also had really good success in the shop with using a very fine sawdust. So this comes out of the bottom of the Anita dust collector and this is like moon dust almost. And this will thicken the epoxy and tint it, um, which is pretty cool. Now if you're going to use a lot of their epoxy, I highly recommend you guys get their dispenser. This guy right here is an absolute game changer. Um, and I'll tell you first off, make sure that you very, that you label your resin and the hardener 
And every time you pour new stuff in here, you really pay attention to where you're putting it because I have put the hardener in the resin section and it's a, it's a nightmare. It's a disaster. And I almost ruined this, but I managed to get it all out and cleaned up and um, taken care of. So the way this guy works is you you basically set it to the, to the ratio you need. It gives you the instructions on how to do it. It's really simple. Push this handle right here. Put your cup here while you do that, and you will get an exact mixture of resin to hardener, exactly how you need it every time, and it doesn't drip that bad. I mean, it's not that messy. You can get as much as you want out of that or as little. So if you only need a couple little pumps, something small, you can get it real quick and easy. It's so much easier than pouring it in and mixing it or even using the pumps. So if you're going to be using a lot of epoxy, you gotta you got to splurge for this. Plus, look, it's got an American flag on it, so that's always a bonus. I'll link all this in the description for you guys so you can check it out. I have seriously been starting to use epoxy more and more and more. Uh, it's slowly replacing Type On 2 as our main adhesive in the shop. We need to get back to this waterfall table. We've got to clean up these edges. Uh, some very fine hand tool work coming your way. And then the tricky part is painting and getting that clean transition uh, from paint to clear finish. So let's jump back into it. So after we get the top veneer section kind of flushed up, you can see we used a hand plane to kind of work it down right to that uh, maple edge. And then that transition there, the best thing I found to do was just grab a card scraper and kind of just kind of work right to that edge and try to get a good crisp clean edge there. It's not gonna be 100% perfect, but um, I, for what I was trying to achieve, I was super happy with the results. The next step was to do the finish. So the way I tackled this was first we sealed it with a Dewac shellac. Um, basic idea here is that you're gonna kind of seal off the wood fibers. Um, so once we tape that edge that we don't want paint on the pecan edge, that shellac, shellac, that shellac is gonna prevent the paint and primer from soaking up under that tape line and bleeding through. Uh, so the sealing with shellac just kind of helps make that clean paint line happen. So once we had it sealed, we taped that edge. And what I did was I took a marking gauge, just like this one. And I set this, this has a little cutter right here. And this is for laying out um, joinery or, or whatnot in furniture making. I set the, the thickness here on this marking gauge to exactly the thickness of that pecan banding. And then all you had to do is run this along the top of the table and down, and it cut a perfectly straight line on that tape line. So you don't have to worry about sitting there and trying to run your tape by hand along that line. It's super, it's almost impossible to get it straight. This right here, it's a sharp cutter. It'll make a nice clean straight line, just follows your tabletop. And then you can just peel that tape away and you're ready to go to paint. Where 
find out. Like a mask. Okay, so that about shuts it down for this build. Definitely one of the more challenging builds I've had. Not really what I'm used to is more traditional furniture. Uh, this is kind of a more modern approach with CNC work and veneers. Really challenging. I learned a whole bunch and thoroughly enjoyed it. And I just couldn't be happier with, with the results, how it came out. Um, I feel like we did a really good job on this one. And I know the client's going to love it. Uh, most satisfying part by far was pulling that tape off. That was pretty cool. That paint line came out looking good. One thing we did do that I didn't show the video is we, we had uh, steel plates, plasma cut, eighth inch steel that matched the profile of those legs and we dropped those, screwed those on the ends and then we'll put a felt pad on those. So when it's on the ground, it's resting on that steel plate. It'll, it can be moved fairly easily. It's super heavy piece of furniture. So if someone dropped it um, from kind of a high point trying to carry it and it hit that one of those legs, it would crush that NDF, it would crush that veneer and it would just mess it up. So the steel plate just kind of gives it some strength down low. So if you drop it, it's um, got a little support down there to keep it from getting crushed. That's it. I'm going to leave you guys with some photos that we took of it in the shop so you can see what it looks like all finished. And as always, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Appreciate all the comments, the encouragement, and the support. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing some more videos with you guys. we got some cool builds coming. So be on the lookout. Uh, as always, huge thanks, big thanks to Total Boat for supporting the channel, for sponsoring the video. Linked all their stuff in the description, so go check it out. We will see you guys next time.